Welcome to The Dennis Report. I'm Dennis Atchison. Our show is authentic, honest, and it's trusted because everything's connected. Many thanks to those who've supported the show. It's deeply appreciated. It allows us to carry on our work and we hope others join too. If you'd like to help the show, go to thedennisreport.ca and click on PayPal or Patreon. Hi, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Dennis Atchison. Today's April 5th, 2022. Our guest today is Willie Schulten with the New Brunswick Landlords Association. The issue of double taxation is a key piece in our puzzle in finances these days. You get many stories about it in the media. And the fallout of those stories also slides to affordable housing, some tenants facing huge increases, challenges for developers accessing funds for affordable housing. And in general, when you look at the picture overall, it's as if we've got all these pieces and we know what the solutions are, but we just can't get them put together properly. Today, Mr. Schulten takes us on a really interesting journey into what double taxation means, its consequences and impacts, comparisons with other provinces, and with that knowledge, where the breakthroughs can occur, how things could be better, how things could move forward, so that in 2040, New Brunswick is a happy place to live because people have something that is fundamental to community. They have a place to live. Sitting in this chair with... We started this lobby effort in 2004, so 18 <laughs> years ago when uh, when I presented the numbers to a chart like this uh, to the uh, uh, Minister of Finance at the time, mm. and uh, we sat down with him and said, these are the numbers as far as our property tax rates compared to the rest of the country. They're way out of line, and our taxes are going up, and I was told, no, our taxes are not going up. We haven't increased the taxes in New Brunswick. And I said at the time that uh, there's two parts of the taxes, right? There's assessments and there's tax rates. And you may not have increased tax rates, but you continue to increase tax assessments. So it does equate to tax dollars at the end. And it's kind of a bit of deja vu this year because although decreasing tax rates, assessments have gone up quite a bit more and uh, the end result is is more taxation not less mm. uh that's been kind of said in the media right we have a, so. about a thousand doors we can go through yep to try to set the audience up at the front end and this might be boring for you no problem. but but the yep. clarity would be great for the audience sure so media throw around this phrase double taxation all the time yes can you give us a better understanding yep of what that means for you? Yeah, for us, it means there, there are two levels of tax here in New Brunswick. That is not the same elsewhere in the country. We get a provincial tax and we get a municipal tax. Now, there are provincial taxes built into the municipal taxes elsewhere, but the amount and, and the size of the tax here in New Brunswick, the provincial portion is a lot more. Now, we've We've gotten some relief on that rate part, um, but that happened back in the uh, 1970s. Before 1970s, there was a provincial municipal tax for everybody. In the 19, around 1972, the Hatfield government um, lobbied or, or was putting it in as a election promise to take away the provincial tax for people with single family homes. But at that time there wasn't a, um, an established rental market really. So the rental, rental properties were kind of left out in the cold and second properties and so on. So that was the time where there was the divide between single family properties that were now taxed the provincial and the municipal, but they got a full 100% credit of the provincial. So at the end of the day, they just pay the municipal. Whereas the rental properties, the ones that we I represent, uh, continued with having the, the double tax, the, the provincial and the municipal. And it exists to this day. But uh, we've had some success along the way, but uh, it still means that our taxes are, our tax rates are so much higher in New Brunswick than elsewhere. Hmm. Um, does your role include all people who rent? 
Like, uh, like what's the parameters of your turf? It would be all people that rent that have joined the association. So there are people that rent out there that um, don't join the association for whatever reason. Uh, but we would represent the people that do. And that would be a lot of the big landlords are part of our association. Like Killam would be our part of our association. Our company, Colbert's, a lot of the bigger companies would mm -hmm. be. So we estimate it's a it's a moving target because we get members come and go, yeah. uh, but we probably are in the sixty percent of units represented mm -hmm. at this point. So and it's growing over the last year, as you can imagine, with the <laughs> issues that are out there. We're seeing membership grow every day now. Mm. So that was that was my next question. Do you have any out of province members? Because there's been several news stories about out of, out of province money. Yep. Making so by buying up old buildings, refurbishing them, and yeah, we have some. Um, uh, well, Killam is national, mm -hmm. uh, so they would be part of our membership. Um, we have had some that have come in and uh, have joined our membership. Mm -hmm. um, we don't really. Uh, uh, I have no interest in representing the people that are coming in and trying to uh, increase rates that are not reasonable mm -hmm. uh, for the people in New Brunswick. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, those people, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say why I would represent. Yeah, good. Um, catch that distinction. Yeah. <laughs> it's an important one, which gets glossed over in, in media. So yeah. they'll see you doing a soundbite and they'll think, oh, landlords. Yeah. And they'll mash that with the story of um, out of province yeah. um, numbered companies buying yeah. up properties. And yeah. Okay. So can, can we fine tune that even more? So sure. does that mean um, those out of province investors? Um, have the ability to kind of do what they want to do compared to your association when they become like that you guys will have a different, I want to call it a moral code. That's, yep. why, that's why I'm hesitating. No, we have a, a code of ethics on our, on our uh, website that people need to follow. Okay. Can you yep. give us a bit of that so that the audience gets it, that don't paint all landlords with the same brush, that it's going to get a little more complicated? Yeah, I, I think that's exactly what has happened and what we're what we're representing is not landlords that are out there to get um, every last time out of rent, uh, renters and to kick them out of apartments uh, so they can do some minor repairs and, and then charge a whole bunch more rent. Mm. Um, we're not about that. We're about longstanding tenant-landlord relationships. And what we see in the media is the, um, in, in my mind, it's the odd few that are are doing the bad things for tenants in New Brunswick, and the vast majority of landlords would look upon those uh, landlords as as not good people in the game because they 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 then the media has branded all landlords that way, and that's not that's not healthy. Um, our company, for example, during two and a half years of the of the pandemic, uh, we gave a two percent increase to our tenants overall. So two and a half years, all they got was a two percent increase. In the meantime, we read stories about every landlord out there increasing rent by a hundred percent, right? Yeah. And uh, and the general public from those stories are thinking that's rampant. Um, in our minds, you know, we might see ten stories in a year. And those get repeated and talked about in, in different streams and make it bigger. We've got 35,000 units in the province of New Brunswick, and there's maybe talk of, of 10 stories. So as a proportion of the overall, um, in my mind, it's, it's less, but it's being portrayed that everybody does it. Hmm. Hmm. Nice stat. How many units again was that? Uh, approximately 35,000. There's an awful lot of stories about housing shortage or population growth. Um, oh, New Brunswick broke 800,000 people, but uh, Fredericton's forecasted to reach 80,000 people. Um, yep. So that's the first in maybe 15 or 20 years where there's been any of that kind of story. Right. Right behind it comes, okay, now what do we do with all that? Right. <laughs> and one of those themes is housing and affordable housing yep. or just housing, period. Yep. Um, can you do a bit of crystal ball? Like, what is it you're going to need? It has to tie back to your uh, the double taxation battle. Yep. Um, because one's going to loosen up something on the other side, is my guess. Right. Because money's a form of energy, and once you loosen it up and let it flow, then things start to happen. Yep. 
So can you play in that space about um, we've got this many units that we know of. We're 60 percent of the total that goes on in the province. We're fighting this monetary taxation issue over here. And here's what's coming at us over the next four or five years. Yep. Well, dur during the latest round of, of our lobby, based on the assessment increases, we polled our members and we asked them how many units are you on hold based on what's happening right now? And uh, they came back with 3,500 units are now on hold, um, of which 2,200 um, are we would start in 2022. Uh, but we're really um, questioning whether to start right now. Um, Is that all so hinge on the taxation? It was hinging on the assessment increases. I, I don't think this year we can separate just a tax a double taxation and the assessment increases uh, out um, as as individual items, and one would solve everything. Um, this year. What the government has done with assessment increases, on average, we got a 30% increase in assessments. So that's direct tax dollars straight to the bottom line of people that are in this business if there was no change in the tax rate. Hmm. The municipalities did minimal. For example, in the city of Fredericton, our tax rate went down 1.6%. Hmm. So on those, on that component of the tax, we had a 30% increase in assessments and one6 percent decrease in tax rate so we have a 28.4 percent increase in taxes going to the city of Fredericton this year you sound like some of the tenants who've had their rents jacked up it's just, it's yeah, the same dynamic almost it is and and it, it it's kind of strange i mean the 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 cost for landlords have gone up uh, <laughs> everywhere else as well our building materials i mean you see lots of stories about building materials going crazy, right? We've seen, I, I, I'm doing projects that we're, you know, seven or eight years ago, we'd be 100% higher than we would have been building apartment buildings seven or eight years ago. So that has to equate to rental rates mm -hmm. and, uh, and affordability. So on, the, on top of all of that, the government chose to go through their, in my mind, there was an embarrassment factor that um, uh, some of these properties were being sold and they were below assessment, uh, quite a bit low, below assessment in a lot of cases. So those were coming back to Service New Brunswick and they said, well, we better do something about that. Well, you can do something about that, but you also on the other side need to fix rates. You can do a cap on those assessments so it comes in over time. They did, they did some of that, but they didn't do enough of that. So adding that cost on top of already high, high building cost um, has made it, um, it, it just, it, it, it really becomes a bit unfathomable for us in the, in the development business that we look at and go, well, you know, we're already getting hammered over here and now tax rates where we've been fighting the double tax rate, yep. um, the assessments are going to go through the roof. Um, it, it really, in the meantime, we have an affordability problem yeah. and, uh, and really you would think the governments would try to help with that, but they seem to be piling on. And, uh, and, and then in the end, the people holding the bag, the developers and the landlords, hmm. um, have have all this cost and we're getting hammered with um well why aren't you doing anything about affordability and between the lines on all of that yeah what i hear is a massive communication problem yeah yeah i think so exactly from the from the perspective of what the government did come out with and not dealing with assessment increases that's the reality that landlords are facing this year is is a 30 percent increase in assessments on average these are averages mm -hmm. some will be fine some had right. i've got properties that have gone up 70 yeah. percent um so it's it's i i only speak to averages because that well, makes makes most sense well you, we can get our heads around it yeah that yeah. way compared to if you're going to subdivide your how you calculated your average and 70 percent there 10 percent there 15 percent there right we'll get overwhelmed yeah for today's purpose anyway right so taxes at the end of the day that, that's the same the same I, I was saying it kind of brought me back to my first discussion with the minister of finance in 2004 Taxes are a combination of assessments and rate. And we only care about the taxes we pay at the end of the day. We've been fighting rate for so long because that was so high. 
And now we have these assessments that are are way more than we would. I mean, they're historic increases. 30 percent is unheard of. Mm -hmm. And in times where other provinces are putting freezes on tax assessments, Mm -hmm. we choose in the province of New Brunswick to put assessments at 30 percent. That that doesn't make much sense. Mm -hmm. And and knowing that we already have this tax rate issue. So it's good that they've finally addressed the double taxation issue. But this year, they should have also done something with the assessment issue mm. because 30% assessments less 10% uh, increase in or decrease in tax rate, the comparison, the combination of municipal and provincial yeah. means 21% more tax yeah. in a times when the media tagline is we, we gave, we saved money for landlords this year. Mm. Why are landlords not happy with that? <laughs> <laughs> it's the combination. Yeah. And on the assessment theme, and thank you for this. Yeah. Um, It almost sounds like we're victims of our own success. So I I can remember 10 years ago, we need to invest in New Brunswick. We need to draw investment in New Brunswick. There's always that narrative just in behind budget time and budget discussion. And when the business community gets on its horse and says, here's how we should build a better New Brunswick. And they'll always talk about investing in New Brunswick. Right. Well, the rest of Canada started to find out that there's a little province in between PEI and Nova Scotia. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) a good one. Yeah, (laughs) you know, which we all kind of knew, but it was kind of fun in a way that they didn't know and they just whistled through because this wasn't going to happen yet. Right. But now it's happening. So all this outside of province investment is pouring in and it's causing this flux that's left you kind of stuck. Right. And it's worst case scenario with COVID hitting and with um, supply chain issues and then prices going up. Yep. I want to get cute too, in a way, because uh, in North America in general, is this narrative about, you know, a rising tide raises all boats. Say, no, <laughs> no, yep. there's a lot of boats that aren't going anywhere That's while right. the tide keeps going up. Right. So do you have... Um, do you have a solution given you've been at this since 2004, trying to get a, a better system in place that benefits everybody? Yep. Now that we're in this and in the thick of it, and it's just starting to peak, we're not even close to peaking yet. Right. What do we do? With affordability or with double taxation? Uh, what would be general? good for your industry? Well, what we suggested to the government was we don't want any savings. We're not looking for savings. We're just looking for an end to double taxation and offset it against assessments. Do so, so pu- putting a cap on the assessments and tell with and, and offsetting it with a rate reduction on the double taxation would leave us with, with landlords no savings at all. And then put a formula in place that you don't have to do um, all of it in one year. Just put a formula in place that our taxes stay the same and uh, assessments, whatever assessments go up, tax rate comes down. We pay the same tax at the end of the day, mm. no savings for landlords, and, and we can then manage our other costs. And for the vast majority of landlords that are managing those costs now, they don't have as much that they would pass on to tenants. Mm. So that's what we would like to see on that front. On the affordability front, um, I think CMHC has done some good work recently. Their new program uh, reduces their fees quite a bit, and that's going to help. Um, we need to encourage other developers to come to the province. That's another reason for taking away the double tax and making us so odd compared to the rest of the country. We don't have outside developers. Uh, most of us that develop are already landlords <laughs> and uh, and. We're, we're the ones that are already here. We have infrastructure. We have people to feed as well, our employees. Our company is 100 employees that we want to make sure continue to work mm. and can feed their families. We're, that's very important to us. So we can't just on a dime say, we're going to stop. Mm. Um, we want to continue. So the government needs to add programs to make sure that that does continue. We have a desperate need for housing. Um, the uh, the provincial program that was just announced went from forty thousand to sixty thousand dollars a unit. That would help bring down assessments, but at the end of the day, that's about accessibility to those funds and to the ability to then offer uh, um, a portion of the units at a lower rent. 
if every time we go to access that, we get a uh, the feeling from the province that, well, you're going to have to jump through a whole bunch of hoops and we don't even know what that's going to be at the end of the day. Um, that's not good. It needs to be very clear cut and uh, and it should be it should be a motivational thing for somebody to pick up the phone and say, we want to do affordable housing. <laughs> Can you help us with that? Yes. Instead, it becomes demotivational when you call and say, well, we don't know what our funds are yet. And we might do one or two and I'd like to do 20 or 30. Yeah. That gets into, you know, if it's one of those Rube Goldbergs with wheels. Like yeah. There used to be a kid's toy where you put all these sprockets in and you turn them and they all turn. Right. Well, there's bureaucracy, there's your industry, there's people needing housing, and the wheels aren't <laughs> meshing right. together very well. Absolutely. So one turns this way and this one can sit still for three or four months and then a window is passed. Yeah. I want to go back a bit on the taxation <laughs> stuff because a question sure. crossed my mind yep. that uh, general public might go. Um, actually, two two-parter. One is um, the government storyline around any budget will be we have to fight the deficit and debt. Right. They'll tend to fight elections on that principle, even though it never goes away. And, and people would challenge whether or not it's a, a real number yep. or an imaginary number. Or I know it has some consequence or weight, but whether it's this number or that number, mm, it moves. Um, so does the government use their strategy for how to fight the debt and deficit when they're sharing or talking with you about why they're doing double taxation or why they moved assessments but taxes this way, that way. Yep. Because in the end, we have to fight the debt or yep. we have to fight the deficit. Is that their counter argument to you? It has been. Um, that's why in, in the, at the start of COVID, they had already had a budget that was going to reduce part of this, this tax over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And they shelved it because of COVID. And they also always had the tagline that um, just as long as it, we, we have a surplus situation to do it. The problem for me is, is this is housing. And other than COVID, what else is, should be a priority when we have people living on the street our vacancy rate in the province of New Brunswick went from 3.2 to 1.7%. Yeah. What else should we be putting as a priority and spending money on if we're going to spend money? Uh, and we're running a surplus right now, so yeah. I don't even think they have that that uh, excuse at, anymore. Yeah, well, the argument fans out pretty quick, and, and it's hard to find consistency or direction. Yeah. It, it's, um, yeah, because there is a surplus, but is that a real number, too? Um, right. It also gets down to a philosophical point or maybe a guiding principle point. Um, there are some who believe that the role of government is to support business. That's very much been the narrative since the 80s. Yeah. There's a lot of other people who believe the role of government is to uh, protect and empower people, which in turn get into housing first, food supply, some sort of transportation, um, creating an environment that's really good for business yeah. as opposed to nurturing business and the rest of you catch up something like that right um the second part of the question was about um your taxes so would anyone be able to kind of come at you a little bit about well all these landlords and they're fighting this double taxation but they can claim all that stuff when they do their taxes yeah i, I i've heard that argument before <laughs> dennis and the 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 reality is is we pay taxes on our bottom lines and whatever our costs are along the way, um, it, it is what it is. Um, but the property tax, people don't understand that property taxes for landlords are the most significant item of our business. So up until this year, before the assessment increases, the taxes represented 40% of our operating costs. After these, I estimate it's it's around 45%. In some some cases, for some landlords, it'll be up to 50%, depending on rental rates and so on. So in in my mind, that's that that should govern all. Um, if it represents that much of our operating costs, mm -hmm. then that's going to be what creates our decision on what we have to charge for rents. And I just I just think people misunderstand that, that they don't really, they think, well, property tax are just a small portion. I mean, I pay property tax on my house and my overall income is, you know, whatever it is, it's only a proportion of my income. 
Well, for landlords, it's a major portion. So say that number again so they catch it. It's, it's what percentage? 40% was before these assessment increases. Yeah. I think it's probably in the 40, 45% range now. That's almost scary. It is scary. <laughs> it is scary. And, and it's scary that the government, with with an item that they know, I mean, Service New Brunswick are the experts in uh, in uh, understanding what these properties are worth. So in order to understand what the properties are worth, you need to understand what the operating income of that is because we assess our properties based on the operating income. Mm. So their experts know darn well that <laughs> the property taxes is the most significant item. Yep. And yet we go on with taxation that brings us so far above the rest of the country. And assessments that come through that are 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 astronomical. Like it, it just it just was unfathomable this year that they would uh, even think that that was okay to do. Mm -hmm. And we fought it hard. Yep. And um, uh, there will be landlords this year that won't be able to pay their bills. Yeah. It, in some ways, it sounds like um, New Brunswick, because of this outside influence or all this new money coming in or people finding and yep. housing prices going up and the assessments going up. Right. It's um, it's like we're in over our head. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is the first time we're looking at this and we're scrambling around to figure out how to, how to balance it or manage it. Right. Whereas, you know, there's stories from Ontario when they went through their housing booms in the 80s and in another one around 2000s or so. Yep. Vancouver's story about foreign investment buying up all the properties and the assessments going up in their struggle. Yep. And sometimes I wonder, like, well... I know we're a lot smaller. The whole province as a whole is a lot smaller. Sure. But the lessons learned and the percentages that could be applied in the method all, surely this isn't new. It might be new for us. Yeah. But it isn't new. Yeah. Um, and if we don't kind of balance out the pieces, we're going to be in trouble 10 years from now. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And I've even heard people say that, why am I complaining when my property's gone up 30%? Yes. And... What they don't understand is I'm not selling my properties. We're growing a business here and we like renting to people and we like treating our tenants well. We're we're not it's just adding cost and it's adding costs that are are really way too high. So um the fact that my my the value of my properties went up on the books um is irrelevant to an operating business. Yeah. Right? It, so. and, and play with the space. Um, this is my personal pet peeve. Yep. Nothing changed with the building. That's right. <laughs> right. So, you know, the fixed asset or whatever you want to call it is, is the same. Yep. But it's assessed value. It just went. Whoosh. That's right. Like, so. And, and there's no reason why that the government needs to. So assessments went up. That's OK. But rates can come down to offset those assessment increases. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why in in these times that and housing is so critical that both the municipal the municipal governments and the provincial governments needed to get more taxes on this. So that's fine. Assessments go up and if there's an embarrassment factor at Service New Brunswick because uh um uh, where people are, are buying properties that are higher well, that's okay. The market went up. It's 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 not embarrassing. It's just the way it is. But both of those levels of government could have said, "Well, we'll reduce the rate." So at the end, the taxes are are similar. Why do we need to increase the taxes in the housing sector hmm. when housing is is such a critical sector right now? And and in that conversation, was there any thought to or attention to? A longer term consequence, three to five year term, because you've alluded to, you know, some people are going to, some of your landlords are going to really struggle this year. Yeah. Two or three years from now, if this keeps up, they, we could be actually reducing our potential for supply. You've mentioned Absolutely. at the front end about 2,000 and change units on hold. Yeah. Um, well, the, gov the government <laughs> has, uh, they've also come out and said this is good for development because 
the, the landlords have been saying the double taxation is stopping development or hindering development. Yep. It's never stopping because we still need to build. Yeah. Um, but it, 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 it's, it's going to be an incentive for more building mm -hmm. because although we have cranes up and every, I've heard that as well, that there's lots of cranes up. <laughs> What's the complaint? Well, our vacancy rate went from 3.2 to 1.7. Yeah. So there's not near enough, but um, it's like we need a dashboard for that. Like we've yeah. gotten used to COVID dashboards. It's like we need a dashboard for. Absolutely. Sorry, I interrupted. People. Yeah, that's okay. Um, so the uh, the I, I lost my train of thought though. Uh, my fault. You're talking about <laughs> all okay. the cranes just because you see all the cranes. Yeah. The um, so we presented to the government the 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 assessments this year came out in two packs. So the first pack came up and out in October, and what they did was they kept what they called superior properties out of the assessment, um, releasing assessments until January. So the first first uh, group was 15 to 20%. At that point, we went to the government and said, that is crazy. You can't, you, you're adding tax to the sector that is critical right now to control costs. And can you do that over a period of time? Can you, can you put a, an assessment um, a cap on that to at least expand that out. And then the second group, we, we really didn't have, we had some conversations, but they really didn't get it yet. And then the next group came out with a 42% on average increase. And we said, I mean, did we not have a conversation in October about this? Are you thinking about it at all? So we finally got some traction on them dealing with that. Mm -hmm. We talked to the premier in, in a Zoom call on that and uh, and explained things and thought, well, they understand. We said, you have to you have to do something with the tax rates and and put this over time. So based on our numbers, a 30% increase this year will mean 21% increase in taxes. Next year, it'll be a reduction of 8%. And the year after that, it'll be a reduction of 8%. So at the end of the, this whole stream, there's no savings this year. Hmm. There's really high, historically high increases. And then the next two years, they'll come off of that historically high increase to bring us back to 2021 after three years. But if they would have did 10%, 10%, 10% on that 30% increase with the tax rate reductions over the same three-year period, mm -hmm. then the two would wash, no savings of landlords again, but an even flow of that. But they didn't. They didn't listen. The tax tax bills came out yesterday. Yeah, I interviewed Charles Murray Ombud for the province. Um, he had this great phrase because his job is in that gap between what government's agenda is and then what all the other agendas are. Yeah. And he said it's not a conversation. More or less paraphrasing. It's not a conversation where you show up and you're explaining your situation in your details, and then the civil servant who's hamstrung by rules. Right. Um, says what they're going to say. And and so here's all this information, technical expertise, skill sets, the ones who deliver it on the ground, whether it's housing, whether it's, you know, business development, whether it's healthcare delivery. Like, yeah. And then there's the constrictions on the civil servant or whoever up but goes through the hierarchy to say, yeah, but I'm here to tell you this is what we're going to do. Right. Um, at the time, we were talking about municipal reform. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was a tough one. And I keep wanting to sidestep the whole thing. And so in your view, do we have everything we need to fix this or to make it better? It's on two axes. One, there's a whole argument based on uh, not enough. I need more. I need more. I need more. Yeah. A general kind of energy. And then there's the other side, which is we've got everything we need. We just don't put it together very well. Right. Where would you want to put, like, can you see that we've got everything we need if we just put it together well, and that would ease an awful lot of, um, you know, social angst and, and pressure? Yeah, I, I think we've, um, I think on two fronts. So on the tax front, um, we need to get away from the silos that we have. We've got assessment branch and we've got tax rate branch. Hmm. And the two don't talk. So whatever the tax rates do, they do. And whatever the assessments, they're just trying to do their job. So on the tax rate front, I think we can do much better. Every, all that 
homeowners care about and rental property owners care about and every other property owner cares about is what taxes are you going to charge me at the end of the day? So we need to eliminate those silos and put them together. On the housing front, we need to have a housing uh, department that deals with our sole goal is to encourage development of housing in the province of New Brunswick and rental properties in particular. And what do we need to do to make sure that that happens? So whenever a developer calls with an inkling of wanting to do some affordable housing, we should be all over that developer and do everything we can to make everything work. The developers at the end of the day that, that follow those programs are not better or worse off. They're just doing some affordable housing in their projects. So it enables us to bring down maybe some of the other rates as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that helps the overall market. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what I would say is we need to have, somebody's got to make an extreme priority for housing in the province of New Brunswick. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we have that yet. Mm -hmm. I think we have social development that has this program, but it's still, it's still well, can you get it or can't you get it? Mm -hmm. It's not comprehensive enough. No. And, and I want to make a connection, too, uh, for the audience. Um, and this might be stuff you've heard before. But around 2005, Community Action Group on Homelessness in the Fredericton area. Yep. But there's the, uh, the Human Development Council of St. John. And then there's the gang in Moncton doing their thing. Right. Um, the inverted pyramid model from Calgary. And I want to draw the connection between taxes and costs for municipalities yep. and affordable housing. So if we could increase the supply of affordable houses and, and affordable living, not houses, but affordable living for people, um, that reduces your municipal expenditures. Yep. So the Calgary Absolutely. model from 2005 showed when you spend 60 to 80,000 on housing a person and giving right. them that stability, it saves you 200 to 250,000 on all these other expenses that you're incurring because that person wasn't housed in the Absolutely. first place. Absolutely, yep. And from the whole range of social issues and mental health, uh, food security, um, just physical security, um, well-being and then becoming productive in community again and getting your feet on the ground, it all starts with housing. Absolutely. And somehow that doesn't whittle through. I mean, it's great that you mentioned it because it's so core to a community. Yep. <laughs> well, I, I It gets lost somehow. I say, well, how did you not know that if you help get these people into these houses. It's not just a compassionate exercise. There's a business case for it. Yeah. And if you just follow money, well, there's a huge monetary benefit for doing that. So, Absolutely. So, and it pays off on the, the costs that are spent, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so and somehow it's still, the pieces still don't want to yeah. click somehow. Well, contrary to what a lot of people think, that I, as president of the Runs a Department Owner Association, is I'm looking out for the big bad landlords. Um, I, I I believe I'm really trying to to support the good landlords and the bad ones. They can go away if, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. But I I was also a member of the Affordable Housing Committee of the City of Fredericton and Housing First. We were involved. I was involved with the uh, the committees that put together the Housing First program in the City of Fredericton. A small part. There was a lot of people that did a lot more than I did. Uh, but that whole concept of how do you expect somebody to be able to deal with their their issues out on the streets? It's not going to happen And that there's a reward system that if you deal with your the problems on the streets, you then get a house. It, it's got to be the opposite because, I mean... Look at the cold winters that we have and people are on the streets. I mean, they're just looking for any escape that they can get. So housing has to be first. Mm -hmm. So the Housing First program, I strongly believe in. So when doing your taxation discussion with government, yep. are you able to get that across? Um, does it, the silo argument, you know, does that silo catch? Because there's a third silo now, which is the affordable housing. Right. Once so you got assessments, taxation. And this third one was like, but you guys could be better off if you paid attention. Yeah, we've always we've always said that because the the property tax component is so big in our business hmm. that this is not a landlord tax; it's a tenant tax. At the end of the day, if if we're taxing more to to, it, you just throw the 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 uh, word landlord before the tax, and everybody thinks that's okay. So we should be, before these changes, we were 2.5 times the tax rate of the rest of the country. Hmm. If 
if HST was 2.5 times in New Brunswick more than the rest of the country, people would be screaming. <laughs> yeah. If our, our and that's on consumer housing, goods, not housing. That's right. And if even if our housing taxes on single family, if that if that got out that our tax rates was two and a half times the rest of the country, we'd be screaming. We'd be fixing all these things. It's taken since 2004 to do any of this. Mm. Um, but that's a reality is... Why do we want to tax? It's such a big component that, sorry, it's not a tax on landlords. It's going to be part of the rent. It has to be part of the rent. Mm. So why why do we continue that, that tenants get this tax and a homeowner that can afford their home and a yard and, and all that don't pay the same tax? I don't understand the, the breakup other than you put landlord before that because it goes to them first, yeah. is okay. Yeah. And this goes back to maybe your concept of, you didn't give it this name, but maybe it's that Ministry of Housing where all of those pieces are under one roof and right. they're made to talk to each other. And yeah. maybe from there, um, a strategy would emerge that actually helps everybody. This gets back to, do we have everything we need? We don't put it together well. Sure. Um, I also wonder about... About housing in general, we, we we are talking about new construction, and that's where all the affordable housing should be focused on. There's a bit of a disconnect with that in my mind as well. It's kind of like putting a square peg into a round hole. Mm -hmm. Costs are so much higher than what they were, like I said earlier, um, five to seven years ago. Mm -hmm. It's doubled at, f from that time period. So trying to force um, affordable housing into new why don't we start focusing on, instead of these people from Ontario taking older buildings and doing mm -hmm. refreshes of those, why don't we encourage good landlords to take buildings that they have and do refreshes and then open up uh, in order to do that? We do have a wrap program, but I don't think that's near enough either. Mm -hmm. Why don't we encourage, instead of jacking up the rent on these, here will help you with the costs that are to bring up the property, hmm. and but you have to put affordable housing in those. So the funding is mainly for new builds. There's a combination. Um, uh, I don't know much about the uh, the the renovation uh, money part because we've we've accessed or tried to access. We we hmm. haven't accessed the uh, the um, new builds because hmm. we've tried, <laughs> but we run into problem every time we do it. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure. Sort of on that theme, and if it fits, great, and if it doesn't, it's fine. We can just move on. But yep. that accessing um, monies from government. Yep. So general public will see an announcement in the newspaper, oh, we've got all this money for affordable housing. Right. And then three years later, you're digging around trying to find the outcome of it. Right. Um, what's that like for you on the inside, um, trying to access that money? Well, from, from our perspective, we had a project on, uh, on Uptown Fredericton that we are building 26 new units and we are trying to go to the government and say, we want to work with you. I'm part of the affordable housing committee. We want to build some affordable housing. We want to work with your program. We want to do half of them. That, that's what the program was at the time. They said, well, we don't have enough. We don't have the funds right now to do it. We'll do two in there. In the meantime, they want developers to You've got to jump through a lot of hoops. You've got to be stuck with a contract for 20 years, um, and and you can't. Uh, if costs go out of out of whack, you can't. You're you're stuck. Hmm. So we said, well, two's not worth it. We we were really trying to work with you. This is a well located property, close to all the amenities, bus, um, hospitals across the street. Essentially, why wouldn't you do 50 percent? Well, we don't have any funds. Well, either you have funds or you don't. Don't lead a developer down a path and then say you don't have the funds. Uh, floating all the risk on, on right. you guys, too. Right. Your story has echoes for me of voluntary sector experiences with uh, dealing with government for funding, whether yep. it's a special event like a sports event. And you'll get 10 cents on the dollar for the government wanting 90% of the control on how it rolls out, what the right. timings are, what the accountabilities are. So again, it goes back to those wheels on that Rube Goldberg, <laughs> yeah. not meshing together well. Yep. Um, there's two other areas I'd like to go play in. Sure. So thanks for all this so far. Yeah, it's, no it's really, really strong and it's really good. Yep. Um, 
moving forward. It was a story I saw the other day, and I thought, oh, i got to ask Willie when he's in. On new builds, it had to do with electric vehicles. Yep. So are you aware of any of the, and it's two things, kind of socially conscious thing, environmental stuff. Um, new builds, are they integrating the charging stations for electric vehicles now when they're building new builds? Yeah. And similarly, with all the new boxes going up, Fredericton in particular, and yep. boxes, I mean the big apartment yep. blocks, you know, 32 of these and 64 of those. Right. There's an awful lot of them going up, which is changing the, the aesthetics of the area. Um, but it, it's still getting people in homes. The recycling element. So as we grow, we're missing some infrastructure issues. One of them is, you know, 10 years from now, building's still there, but there's going to be a lot of people driving electric cars or right. more. Yep. So they're going to be looking for the charging stations where they park because overnight that's when you charge your vehicle. Right. So is that being integrated in as an environmental building um, as well as here's the building's recycling center and we can capture the 64 units that are in there. Can you speak to those things? Because often it comes up, well, that's extra cost and I can't afford it. Yeah, on on electric, I think we're gonna it it's gonna be a need, not a want okay. in the future. Um, so we're we're building it into our equations now. Um, we're not doing it for all. If we're building a forty unit, we wouldn't have forty no. uh, stations, but we're certainly putting a portion of the stations in. Okay. So um, if developers aren't doing that, I think they're going to be at a competitive disadvantage in the future. So I would say it's it's needed. It's okay. not uh, it's not a it shouldn't be looked on as a choice because we are going in that direction. Yeah. Whether there's everybody will have them or a portion of, of the population will have them, you're going to need it. Yeah. Yeah. And the recycling part, because that's been a bugaboo for 20 plus years. So new buildings are built to shift from people can't afford houses, but yep. they can get into an apartment. Um, seniors getting older, downsizing, getting into apartment, yep. but the recycling element for their lifestyle just disappears. So um, back, uh, I'm going to say it was 12, 15 years ago, the city of Fredericton took away garbage removal for uh, and recycling for apartment buildings, multi-res buildings. Continued it with single family. So I, I have a home. Uh, every Friday, I bring my recycling to the uh, to the street and my garbage, and it's part of the property tax I pay. We pay <laughs> two times the property taxes, and they took that service away. So I think that's where part of the issue is, is it is now just an added cost. Um, we had buildings where we had sheds that we separated out, out recycling, and uh, um, then they discontinued the program any, so i mean i'm hanging here is there any reason why do you know why was it well, too expensive because, for them or uh, no i think they were it was cost savings it was cost savings for the city of fredericton My. and and it was the the city of moncton was doing that and the city of st john was doing that so we should be able to do that and we just said well you're adding cost yeah so you take away you take away a service that's included in higher property taxes. Mm. By the way, we're in a 40-unit building. That's 40 households. Mm. And at the end of the day, you have to bring a truck to this one location where all 40 come together. Yeah. It's so much more efficient than 40 <laughs> houses. Yeah. And well, yet you don't want to provide that service. Yeah. Sort of on that theme, you know, when we do our garbage day and recycling day on our street, yeah. um, you can see it looks like a little plastic um trees that took, 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 took posts all the way down the end of the driveway. Right. And, and in my wonky way of thinking, I think, well, if gov if municipal government's costs are too high for collection, just have the neighbors kind of share on the driveway. And I asked the garbage guys when they come through a couple of times, would, would that help you? Wear and tear on the trucks. Yeah. They'd be through in half the time. Sure. Like, there's all kinds of pluses. And all the neighbor has to do is, you know, you two share on this driveway and you two share on that driveway. Just everyone double up. But they do that and, now, right? Yeah. They, they do that for uh, for multi-res. So their solution to multi-res was, we're going to have depots or different places in town hmm. where the people oh. that are in multi-res can go and, and accumulate there so yeah. they can do the recycling. Yeah. The problem is, is... Some of these tenants don't have cars. <laughs> yeah, and you're not even close to potential. So right. once yeah. upon a time, there was a system in place that the municipality paid for. Right. And it's centralized to the same convenience that these 40 units all go here. Right. Or all these neighbors down the street, everybody doubles up and you cut it in half. Right. And then it's gone as a cost savings. Right. 
that sounds like not putting people into homes and then your costs are going to go up. It's it's right. an inverted logic. It is. Yeah. Oh, so how big a rubber mallet do we need to get <laughs> to pound the thing through to, to make it know. to make it work? Um, so solutions then for all of this. It sounds like some pieces are there. So what is it that you need and your industry needs so that five years from now, this discussion and similar discussions actually had some sort of impact on at least awareness? Oh, I didn't see it that way. I didn't understand it that way. Yeah. Maybe we need to loosen up how we've built things so far and kind of let it deconstruct it and rearrange the parts so that five years from now, 10 years from now, when we are 80,000 people, right? that... Everybody's got a safe place to live. Landlords are running an efficient and happy business. Yep. The community is happy because, hey, look at all these good things that we do here. It's, I'm trying to introduce the happiness quotient yeah. stuff into yep. the, the creation side at the front end and to wheedle that as an important piece. Like, you know it's okay because you'll feel good about it. Yeah. And then the numbers shake out after. Right. I don't. I, unfortunately, I, I don't think there's a magic bullet. Mm. I think it's a very complicated issue, um, housing and and trying to tie everything together. But we need to we need to be real about our our uh, incentivizing um, housing. If if we in affordable housing, housing everything, um, we can't be out there saying something that we're doing. And it's not real. Like if if uh, on both the the support for affordable housing, um, if it's if you're putting that program out there, then it's got to be accessible. No ifs, ands, or buts. If somebody wants to do it, you have to figure out a way to pay for it because housing's that important. On the taxation, you can't say there's going to be a bunch of savings and send that message to landlords that are trying to do a good job for their tenants. And then it's not real. Like it, it's it's you. It, it's not even close to real. It's quite the astro, extreme opposite. That twenty percent one percent increase in taxation this year is not savings. So I think it 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 really needs to be housing is a priority, and that is is a capital I S because you can't just say things and throw them out there. And the realities of how people are dealing with it are not happening. So that would be my answer to that is, is make it real. I'm tempted to stop there, but is there anything that we didn't touch on that you want to get to? Yeah, we didn't t touch on rent controls. And, and you might want to ask that question <laughs> or you might want to. Uh, no, do it. So. Very good. <laughs> um, I, I, I've been out in the public and have said that rent controls, I don't agree with rent controls. And the reason why I don't agree with rent controls is not what you or, or the people that listen to this may think. The reality is, is if we can control costs, then rent controls are fine. If the end result is that we want to maintain a a good percentage increase for the, the tenants of New Brunswick, then we have to control the cost. I'm not sure how that's a lot more complicated, right? Because maybe we can control the cost better on the taxation front. And, and they really can <laughs> because they've, they've completely uh, dropped the ball on it, in my opinion. But on the other cost, you can't control that. So passing that all on to landlords to then say, well, too bad for you that you got in this business. We're going to control your revenue by this amount and costs are just going to keep going up. Um, well, you're just going to have to deal with that. That's, there's, an, there's an inherent unfairness with that. And nobody's going to feel bad for landlords. I get that. Um, it's really about the tenants and I get that as well. So the rent controls that are in place, no, I don't agree with it. Um, I think the tenants needed the help, and uh, and that's fine. But that's why I don't agree with it, and that's why most landlords would not agree with it. Is you if you're not controlling the inputs, you, how do you? Wh why do you then say, well, 
you're just going to have to, your business is going to go to pot <laughs> because we're not going to control that. That We're going to control what you can charge, but your costs are going through the roof. Does it ever cross your mind what would happen if the government applied those principles to other industries? And I'm thinking specifically yeah. food. Yeah, absolutely. Because food has gone up a lot more than gas. We use that as an example all the time is why... Why do people look at landlords and say, we need to control their revenue? Why aren't we into the supermarkets and telling them that, no, you can't charge that much? Yeah. And, and uh, it, it just, it, it seems like our industry has been singled out for that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that that's a fair situation. Oh. I think what they did do didn't get a chance to work its way into the system. Um, uh, by putting the control that if you get the Ontario landlord that came in and bought a property and put up the property by 100%, mm. uh, it rates by 100%, that new rent control that they did put in would have put a stop to that and was putting a stop to that. It just wasn't very long. It was only put in place in December. Mm. So we never even got, gave that a chance to the pretenders out there that are causing a bad, bad name for the landlords. We don't want the government to tell us that we can't give increases. But for those ones that are doing crazy things, mm. albeit, I, I, I'm all for it. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. That gets into uh, what kind of province do you want to live in? Right. So what's the what's the best version? It's like that. Here's the championship, and this is how we're going to work our way to the championship right. approach. You know. Well, I I, th I think what we're doing, as far as population growth, multiculturalism, all those things that come along with that, hmm. are phenomenal. Hmm. Um, but we have to keep up with it, hmm. and uh, we can go two directions with that population growth. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it wonderful that the province of New Brunswick is now a destination for people? that people are looking at New Brunswick and saying, there's a lot of good things about New Brunswick. So I fully support all of that. Immigration, in-migration from the rest of Canada, come to New Brunswick, we're open for business. But we're not going to be open for business long if we don't have places for people to lay their head. So if we aren't putting housing as a priority, we talk about it. But if we're not, in 2040, there could be two outcomes. One could be, we've got so many people in the street that it's, it's, I mean, it's bad enough now, it could get tremendously worse. Or we could have a lot of people here, thriving businesses, people wanting to come here because we've got a smart community, um, we've got all these great universities that are supporting uh, businesses, and people want to set up their businesses here. Um, and we have lots of housing. But I think housing is a critical part of that. And if they if we don't keep up with the population, it could go into negative vacancies and that's going to be even worse, right? So that's I, I can see two different uh, uh, futures. <laughs> so we have our work to do. We do. We definitely do. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Hey, well, thanks for watching. As always, if you want to support the show, go to the dentistreport.ca, click Patreon or PayPal. Be good, have fun, love each other.